I'm gonna start over because I I started um Okay, so I started um, explaining Jesus and uh, where we have been with the mission statement, um, the goals for, um, let me, mission and vision, all right? Whenever I do uh, classes, um, I always have to put it around my spiritual foundation because of where I was birthed from. And um, when I say birth in here, when I had the music playing with Cece, um, she said, darkness tried to steal my heart away. Uh, one of the things that we do not sometimes look at, and we haven't been taught in our church experience. I love it because I've been taught and seen so many things, but I go back and I recalibrate what was given to me. And what we did not understand is in the beginning, again, we, we talked about our mission statement being everything that we came in this world looking at, you know? And if we go back, we can see the mission, that is with a conscious mind and an open heart. So mission and vision. When Jesus and John was called, it's not a religious thing that they were out there working with people. We just had the idea given to us in that way. So every one of you are incorporating a business, I believe. And leadership is a part of it because John came on the scene first and John was doing a work, planting. And then, you know, when you look at people, people will get stuck at that part or that's just their part to play, John's part. So you ask yourself, what is my part? because the relativeness of this time and age has a lot to do with the community. Here we are in a community, whatever community that you're forming, how you are you know, setting out to help people. So John was set in motion to baptize Jesus. One of the things is, is can you separate John and Jesus? Can you put them together? Could you see them being one man, one man having a dark side, one man having a light side and his mission starting back there? And I know what the Bible says, but you know, sometimes you have got to imagine what truth is trying to tell you because every one of these people in these Bibles is who we are. We're having their experiences. We have the dark part, we come in here and Mary was ridiculed because she was pregnant without having been um, in, having sex in that you understand. So ridiculing, being ridiculed, persecuted, or even John coming into the time where Jesus comes on the scene and you got to get baptized. All of it, listen, please take religion out of this. Because all of the corporations that's falling right now have used this model. This is not something that I came up with. It's something that I was taught from spirit. And I'm teaching you because whenever you go into a work, it's for your passion. You won't make money if you don't have a passion. The souls of men. You can focus on that if you feel called to it, or you can focus on the work that you do. But the souls of men needed to be saved. And that's what Jesus and John was set up to come into this world to do. They were set up to come into the world to do, all right? So if they were set up to come into the world, does that exempt you and I? consciousness, acceptance of your importance, right? Because you can't set no goals and do them. You can't even set a mission statement or a vision statement without hearing what I'm saying. 
because this dude, this dude is trying to show people Jesus about themselves, which is totally different from what we were taught. So we have to undo stuff, definitely, right? Come out of the illusion. But when John asked Jesus, could, could you baptize me? Jesus said, listen, get on with the business because you know that's not what's written, okay? Now, when Jesus is baptized, what do you think is happening all over the world right now? There's a baptism happening for the purge. Whenever you're going through something and you're crying, you're purging. Why have we become so hard-hearted that we feel like we cannot cry or show our true emotions, right? Especially when you're a leader. Look, you can be a manager and be like that, but leaders are not stoic. They are not hard-hearted. Leaders show people the way. Leaders show people the, 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 truth, the truth of who they are. That's managers cover up and try to keep people from knowing their selves because managers don't want to be outdone. Why am I talking about this? Because you have a model of Christianity that has been, you know, it's been uh, demonstrated in all different kinds of ways, but the Aquarian age is here. And if I put a model together, for myself or for other people, I would say it's been what I've been waiting for because collectively we have to work together in a community. So what is your goal? My goal is to teach people this. My goal is to keep on uh, attracting people that understand the dynamics of what I do. Because if I could get people to understand the dynamics of me, what I'm doing, they understand that it's not about me. I'm about hum human nature. What does that mean? Mentally, physically, and spiritually, I'm gonna teach you what I know so that you can go out and teach even more. You might tap into one area, but 20 years from now, you might be doing the same thing as me. Hop, skip, and jump from one ology to another. I'm not mad at the spirit. I got it now. Because there are people that learn differently. There are some people that do not even want to hear about what I'm talking about right now. So you go and you pull them in, you, know, you throw your hook out with uh, astrology. And then they come back to the way that they were known or shown. You tell them something about Buddha. And then they go back to the way that they were known or shown. The, the, the thing about it all is getting people back into a place of spirituality. And that's not something that you have to work, but it's something that I do. Why? Because mentally, physically, and spiritually, people are, they're losing it. It's been coming. It's been happening. It's just becoming more pronounced, right? You can't, you can't shy away from it. People want prayer, they don't wanna pray for their self. I say, I'm sorry for you, you better pray for yourself. You know why? We're not dependent. And we're breaking ties with codependency. So the goals that I set have to do with people standing on their own, in groups, creating groups. Um, Joel uh, Goldsmith, uh, if you don't have the link, you know, let me know, I will send it to you. Uh, there's a lot of teachers that taught back in the 50s and uh, the, the 40s uh, that you can learn from. Uh, you will not progress in life at this time if you do not, uh, if you don't take your spirituality with you. Because the Aquarian age calls for collective um, unity. And the reason why is because people, you know, I'm telling you a story, but I'm telling you, today is a new moon and there's been a purge. You know, every 30 days or 29, something like that, whatever it is, Leo's going to be coming up at the end. I think that's a full moon um, at the end of the month. This is 15 days from today or so. Yes. It's a full moon. So what's happening here is that 
the, the moon will be full and you're going to get information out of it. But every time you get the moons, you know, we're in a place where we're bringing back information from the ancestors to be able to plant our seeds and to release stuff from the moons because this is what we were robbed of. So my goal is to show up and affirm that I do not believe in religions or spirituality being separated, unless you want to hate crime kind of uh, spirituality. I'm not doing that. All right. I'm not into the darkness because um, I live in darkness. Out of the darkness, the light came, which is this information. And if you don't understand that, we can talk about that another time. But your goals are always going to be derived out of what you do. I can't change what I do and become a um, fashion designer unless the spirit of God does that. We must uh, see that everything that we do at this point has to originate out of heaven. Heaven is not outside of you. It's within you. So your meditation and your prayer, it is very important. If someone said to me today that prayer is not working for them, I would say they need to um, cross over into meditation. Why? Because that was my experience. So I do both. Your foundation is important to you. Um, I respect whatever uh cultures and practices people have i think that it's very important again as long as it's not hate and the reason why is is because i remember when i had a hair salon and a lady came in and she was um muslim and after i did her hair for a while she opened up and she told me that her husband was abusing her you see um Sometimes we've been caught up in religion and what happened is we tried to convert them. We don't need to convert them. We need to love on them. So you ask yourself again, what is your goals? Converting was never a style for me. I, I couldn't get into it and I followed Christ the way that I do. The souls that need to be saved is the same um, souls that I deal with outside of here. Mental health, people are calling and saying that they need things. Well, you know, when you go fishing, you find out what the person needs. Your hook is what the person needs. I cannot give you answers because Everyone has to think for themselves. Some people are looking for the answer, but the answer is within us. You see, hope all over the world. People are voting for people that are fighting, leaders that are fighting the great hope. Your great hope is within you. And so when you look at Jesus being baptized, are y'all following me for yourself? Because I'm telling you why. It is written. It's, it's a word that's written just like you're going to write it down. You know, Honora's over there. She always tell me I write it and make it plain. But it's a word that was written. How do you see it for yourself? Because you got to get it personally before you can get it professionally. But I hope that you get it personally so that you can turn it into your profession. And so this hope of mine, did I ask for it to become my profession? I did not. But it is so. In most cases, if you call me or if I'm doing sessions, you're going to get Christ in it. Why? Because that's who I am. I don't know who y'all are, but I am the Christ. And I'll go further than that because I've been beyond the veil. But some people can't handle beyond the veil. You see, you understand that beyond the veil teaches you the mysteries. And that's why we have so many um, issues and divisions with spirituality, because it's got to be the way that it's written. Listen, when you when you get beyond the veil or you see beyond the veil or it says and you shall know the truth and it shall make you free. What is it about the truth that you need to get freed from? You need to get free from some lying ass husband that's been whooping your behind. 
until the men come on. Because anybody that's abusing somebody, that's a lie from the pit of hell. That is codependency. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, there is a woman that beats a man. And he need to escape her too. But if that's what you like, then it is so, right? Your truth is what you believe. Your truth is being a liar. Your truth is being a thief. Until you decide that you want to shift it. Your truth is being um, broke. Because every time you profess it, it is so. Every time you think it, it is so. Do we not know that in this book, these dudes was practicing something? Yes, because Jesus was baptized and the doves were seen on him. But he went right into hell where the devil was uh, uh, tempting him. In chapter three, I believe of Matthew. I don't even need the book. I can tell you, but it's it's in a it's it's in a way where I just I see I see the picture. I'm glad that I saw the picture. You know, it became a movie to me before they started making movies about the Passion of Christ. Because when you read and when you are in need, ain't no other way but your foundation. Ain't nothing happening but your foundation. You stay right there, your foundation. You keep trying something else, your foundation. You know what I'm saying? That was for me. I'm not saying it's like that for anybody else, but if Jesus was tempted for 40 days, and I've been, I've been tempted like that too, but more than 40 days, I can kind of understand the relevance of what was happening because he had to deny those issues that was coming up and more such as bills. Bill, Bill, how did Bill get your name and how did Bill come to your address, right? Because of false teachings by people in this world, right? Bill, to hell with Bill. When God said the truth will make you free, do you believe in Bill or do you believe in heavenly? See, the, the equation with all of this is, is even if you taught somebody about um, bills and how to, you know, get rid of bills, you'll go over to Romans 8 and find that he says that they that worship me in spirit and truth or in the spirit, if you worship the spirit, you owe no debt to man. That's in Romans 8. You don't say it just one time and some people got a different way of teaching, but I'm going to tell you what. I had to convince myself, which means that I had to talk about this with myself over and over again until they became one with me. So what is your goal? And what do you need? What are you gonna do for the people, right? Because I know a lot of people that need money. So I'm just throwing out a scripture in Romans 8. It's about 8 and 12 and 13. I would read King James. Uh, in that because it's real. He said, you owe no debt to man if you walk by the spirit. So you got to make a choice. And let me just tell you about the choice. The choice will make you doubt the choice you made. Because you live in a world of illusions and you're around people that don't believe like they say. See, people believe until they get their behind in the fire. And I ain't making fun of nobody. I'm talking about myself. I can't do nothing but believe because that's what I was sent here to do. I have fought myself and the spirit like Jacob. Can't, can't, I can't not believe. Your prosperity is in your belief system. So if you believe that you are broke, then it is so. And that belief system is coming from where you grew up. Mission statement, everything you saw. 
your hatred, your anger for people, what your experience was, abuse, it is coming from your mission statement, your mission. Loveless. Because you didn't get enough love or you didn't accept it. Judgment. Because you judged everything because somebody else judged you. Bully. Because you were bullied. Not being listened to because no one listened to you. Yes? So your mission statement, your vision, and your goals for your, your business. How, how will you change you uh, in this moon? How are you changing? You may want people to tell you about who you are and what you're doing, but you got to ask yourself who you are. You know, Jesus did ask the, the disciples, who do they say I am? I don't know if he was confused because, you know, I, I look at things different from people. I don't take the word literally. I believe that the word has a spiritual context. By, mysteries are behind. I do not read it literally. Why? Because I was trained to do that. Not read literally. That means that I literally do not take people for who they say and show me they are. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? If I took people the way that they, they showed up, that means that I may not work with them. I look at them for what I see within them. Your prosperity is within you. You know, Isaiah 41, uh, he says, I'll give you the hidden secrets uh, and treasures that are, or the treasures that are hidden in darkness. I said this to um, a couple of people last week. I, I, you know, I had these prophets telling me all the time that, um, wisdom wisdom you have wisdom and it's like okay yeah but i'm going through you know i accepted it you know i was just crazy i was about spiritual things you know i didn't have to be convinced it was just okay okay but i was like where, why is nothing manifesting especially when i got into the pit of hell that's when i was learning how to get my way out like this is your cross everything that you did this is how you get out. So what are your goals to help people get out when you get out? Because some people think they out of hell and they are not. Why would I say that? By our living standard. We were convinced that, you know, if we go and buy big cars and big houses and being in debt, that there was it. Where is freedom when you got all those responsibilities, please? Let's turn this around. Times change and the time that we were living in said by big houses and big cars. Even from the prophets, you know, I'll say for myself, cause I had to go back and look at all of this here. But when you look at and you feel the time, this is it. You were following what others said. Now you follow the spirit of Christ within you, why? Because this is what it was all about, the navigation of your heart, getting into your heart. Because, you know, material things don't allow you to be the truth. Material things hinder you from the truth. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have, but I'm saying that the time of enfoldment is really upon us because we were trained by society and our families on having things. Why? Because we were born in most cases not having enough, or that's what we were told. If you weren't told that you didn't have enough, would that be relevant? You see? That's right. See, you wouldn't even know it, but someone told us we didn't have enough predicated by something else someone else was doing. 
I'm just focused on what I'm doing. I'm focused on how I, I don't care what other people are doing. You see, if we got back to that part and I'm focused on helping the people that are a part of whatever I do. Like-mindedness, why? I don't want you to agree with me because we have to disagree at times to get a better understanding. But in order to get young women and young men on the right road, especially in our um, culture, we're going to have to say things that's going to hurt their feelings, right? But in the past, it's been, I need to say what makes people feel good. I don't like that. Now, that's just me. I'm not pushing that on you. I'm giving you, for instance, because I'm motivating you on something. I'm saying, what are your goals? How are you going to help society? When darkness is showing itself, first of all, why would people go to church or worship or have spiritual experiences or, you know, speak in this here fashion when, and then go and vote? Just leave my hat hanging right there. You can text me right there and, and give me your answer because now we're in a place where people are pushing and, and they still hoping. They had a, another uh, race to, to bring votes. I'm just trying to show you something because people don't try to think outside of what they've been learned. You've been learned all of this here mess, right? We have, we watch, some of us ain't a part of it. But if you don't have goals set for you that are different from what is happening in the world, you and the people you work with, where are you going to be in another year? Yeah. Because the time uh, is calling for that. You know, when you look at the fact that you believe that Christ came, and um, is a savior, then you got to find out what that really means to you. A lot of people don't like the word savior. Someone has to show the way. Maybe all of us on here has the responsibility for that. I don't know. I know that I can't help anybody that does not want to help themselves. So I'm going to put that out there, right? So you show the way. That's all you do. The next thing is, is what is your investment into them? This is an investment. What, you know, what we're doing here is an investment. I take it personally. That's why in most cases I won't stop until I have no breath, you know, like tired when I'm speaking in this way because wake up is what is coming out of my mouth. Wake up. And then that some people would spread that information of wake up. Because what are you mad about politicians that are showing up as um, dissension, in dissension? What, what, what you mad about? What you mad about the damn world being tore up? What, what, what you mad about when they've been lying and they've been taken away from people. You ain't gonna get nothing until you take it. I, I believe the Bible says that the violent take it by force. Am I asking anybody to go out and rob anything? No, I'm asking you to set your goals and set your standards, set them high. Go back to your foundation. What is your foundation? And if you have none, use this, right? If someone does not have one, use this. Number one, what is this? Love. It is love. Love vaunteth not, it's not puffed up. Love does not hurt. Love does not take food from people. Love does not tell you that there is a food shortage coming. America could never be short of anything. Let me tell you something. As long as you have energy in your body, you can produce anything that you desire. 
because you are the tool and the mechanism of production. That's why we're in America. That's why they created slavery. You and I, the energy, we have all the money that we need. Going beyond the veil, yeah. The veil is the illusion. You got a curtain, it looked like, you know, you, you go through, but if you push the curtain open, you see more, don't you? You might have to wipe your eyes and that kind of thing, but the story is not a lie. That's the veil um, conversation is in uh, Hebrews. But do you know that the veil is the breaking of your body? For some reason, we just so stubborn, we won't give it up. Whenever your heart is broken, it's a good thing. That's when you can go beyond the veil. Now, you can forfeit it and you can stay in controversy with people because your heart been broken. You've been put on the cross and you've been stripped. You've been nailed up. You've been, you've been beat down. This is the best time of your life to realize what your goals are, whatever you go through, whatever your, your seeming losses are. Because if you could get to that, that place in the tomb, you sit there for a while, you're going to rise again. Your mind, every time, round and round, round and round we go. What are your goals? Predicated on your spirituality and the work that you're going to do. When you go out and you're speaking, when you are on the radio or on your podcast, when you are posting, what, what are you going to do? Your creations. What, what is it going to do for people? See, because people are not buying if you don't have something they need. Your goals. And in the health services, you know, I will tell you that for me, um, in most cases, being out in the streets has been a, um, a necessary thing, but I'm changing that because God has changed uh, and God is within my life, you know? And, and because I threw the hook out there over the last past 10 years, there's people that are in need that are contacting me. When you're, uh, when you're in your business, I'm not saying that no one is there. Be confident the way that I am right now. My confidence is definitely in Christ. I, you know, you can ask me about something else and I'll tell you, I don't know. But if you to ask me about spirituality, I'm going to go there and I'm going to let you know. Because that's, that's my work. I teach out of my work. Things change. They do. But the word does not change. God will even teach you how to teach that word on a different level. Because I'm not no preacher like um, the other ones. Y'all see, I'm a teacher. So your goals, they have to fit the need of the people because the people are the ones that's going to buy. Any questions? All right. Good job. I have my class tomorrow that um, does discuss this in depth because I'm taking these people into money that's asking about money from the spiritual point of view. And if you ask me again and, you know, or your mind is saying, where are we going with this? Because sometimes, you know, we are spending and we're in a, um, in that, that um, new moon um, energy, which uh, some people can be tired from um, draining and the purging is going on. So remember the baptism. The baptism is the new flow in. When, when, when people have been trying to keep that old stuff, and, and sometimes we're not aware of what we're trying to keep. 
I know that it's a struggle with emotions and when people have done things to us. But the sweetest thing in life is release. Because you know what you came to do and you know you cannot keep the garbage. So the consideration for yourself, because this is not um, some information that you're getting that says you have to. Whenever you're wanting and desiring for truth, you're going to look at yourself and start scaling, uh, scaling down yourself. You're going to start saying, now I hear what you think and you need to shut up and get rid of that shit, girl. You're going to start talking to yourself because you know, you, you know, you're, your, your other your alter ego over here is wrong. Like John saying to Jesus, could you baptize me? And he's like, listen, do your job. We are not deviating. That was about deception. And the reason why John couldn't do it is because John was representing one portion of a lifestyle. And that's why I brought up, could they have been one person? Because, you know, I don't want to be the devil's advocate, but I'm a Capricorn. That means that I'm looking at everything. Why? Because even when we go over and we talk about the talents, the reason why I could give you some and somebody else some and give somebody else one is because I already know what you're going to do with it. That means you see more than just the words. And, and you know, when people are talking, you see what they're saying. You don't have to just hear. You see what they're saying. So where does that go when you're talking about goals? You better have a goal to understand people beyond themselves. Because people don't need you if you don't understand them face value. I need to see your heart. And it's not about playing games, but sh people, that's all they know how to do because we're in a world where games are played, right? They say, if you play your cards right, everything's gonna be all right. Guess what? Sometimes you gotta get the deck and it's your time period, not if. I sent some messages last week on role reversal. And sometimes I don't send them to people because they're not on or, you know, um, if they don't understand that. Listen, role reversals came back to me today. But you cannot get in that energy of role reversal if you still holding on to old stuff. I see it, but I just don't, child, I'm glad you planted that seed because I had to fight with it. And now that it's over, I know how much greater I am. You see, people, they take stuff too uh, far. And our pride will say, You, you know, you didn't, you didn't respect me, but it's a respect that comes from pride. Get that pride out of the way. Look, the people that we're dealing with, if we're spiritual beings and we practice, and the people that we're dealing with in most cases do not understand what we understand. And some people do not warrant passes. I get it. Yes, it is. But I can look at you and laugh. Because... Pride thought it was going to stay like this. Like, pride thought that them presidents was going to stay the same way. They done showed up and showed how ignorant they are. And you know, I'm going to tell y'all about that. Because I want to open your eyes. And when somebody said, oh, it's because of you, you know, because you don't vote. No, I, it's because I don't believe in that BS. You see? 
instead of getting angry and getting mad, you, you know what? People should look at the fact that they done voted for these fools. You want them in charge of your life. You, what, you want them telling you about how you get money. Can I set some goals to get some people in a place where they want to go in? Listen, I don't care about uh, Camilla Harris being a woman. She ain't the woman that I am or you are. Wake up and build your communities. And I know that it looks like it's hard. And I know that it looks like it's far from us. But when you go over into Acts and 7 and you read it, listen. Acts and 7 tells you about a time when Moses said that the, the people that had been um, in slavery for over 400 years would be freed. That was at the Moses time. The Jews knew about what's going on. The Jews was a part of it. I ain't talking about religion. I'm talking about history, you see? history. It's their story. So how do you rewrite it? And I know that people will get off from here today and say, I can't. You know what? You can do all things, but you got to go into your heart and believe other than what you saw. People around you doing nothing, just settling, waiting on somebody else. I'm going to tell you, this ain't no religion that we read about in the book. It's history. It's what they wrote. Now, how do you rewrite it? That's why. Leadership starts with people looking at the mission and the vision and the goals for themselves and for the people. Because those leaders had a mission and a statement, vision. It's all about money for them. They even took away your ability to think. I'm not telling you that you have to do that. They even took away the heavens from you and said it's all about earth. That is a lie. All around you look and see water, elements. We are created of them. And our people, they suffer because they lack knowledge. And they don't want it. I bet you they're going to want it this year, baby. Oh, 2021, I'll be glad when it comes. Oh, it's going to be a great year. You know who makes the great year? We do. I'm so tired of stupidity. Even in myself, you know what I'm saying? That's why I study. I don't know everything, but I do know that a year ain't changing without people changing. Can I get an amen? A woosa or something. Whoa, nah, nah, whoa, nah, nah, something like that. All right, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. 2021 ain't gonna be nothing without us making changes. That's why, you know, I stepped up. I understand the energy that I'm in and I'm teaching from, you know, the book. Because the book is not about religion. Just tear that down. It's history. Everything that I've learned about um, things that y'all, some of y'all don't even know that I know, it came from me just reading a book and it was opened up. So I accepted people because it opened up my heart, but I had to go through levels and levels of heart opening, right? Here I am, I'm still doing that, I'm purging every go round and round. But the thing is, is that I started looking into history. If anybody listened to me, they will know that I go and I study his story. Cause see, I got to change his story. I don't want his story. I want mine. And the very, very essence of what I want is what God gave me to help people change their story. See, I don't have to do a whole lot, but study. Somebody else looking for me to do something else, they're talking about, you need to record this way and record. Look, you don't know what God told me. It's very profitable to see people show up in a leadership program and then tell others so we can change history right here.
there are some people that are working that are not able to come on. So I send the uh, the the videos to them. Um, and I told a young lady, I said, I know you're not listening to those videos. That's OK, though. You know, I did a private session. It's OK that you don't, but you're losing a lot of information. Plus, you paying twenty five dollars a week. I mean, a month. But I ain't mad at you. Because it's more than worth it. I would believe that anybody that you're investing in, even from this point of view and whatever you've known to do, whatever you've been given, it's more than worth it, whatever you do. You got to get with your worth. And when you know the things that I'm telling y'all today, I just know it's just a matter of time before the flock come in. You know why? Because it's a lot of people that won't look at history. They trying to change today what they doing today. They trying to change what they did when they came into life. But they ain't looking at all the dynamics like Marcus Garvey said. In order to make a change, you're going to have to go to the root. That's why I believe in Alpha and Omega. Change it from the beginning to the end. I work with anybody, whatever skin, color, culture, but I am set on women and men of color. Why? Because of the ignorance that they really partook in. And they still do, because it's easy. Why is it easy? Because they were taught to be lazy. Lazy how? I go to work, minimum wage lazy. Taking whatever people give you lazy, right? Settling. Don't be mad at them because you found out that they had something else. Be mad at yourself because you didn't get up and find the worth in yourself. You know, the sabotage that you bring into your life is simply people that are doing the same thing. They lying and thieving. They stealing from themselves. Judas, this is it. I've come that you would have life more abundantly. You cannot have it until you realize that you've not been giving to yourself. You didn't find the word. Life abundantly usually is not coming to anybody until they went through uh, seasons where they seen that they were um, not believing in themselves. Which is your karma? You have karma because and negative, by the way, because you didn't believe in yourself. And then you mad because somebody else acted like they didn't believe in you. Who do you think is going to believe in you if you don't? I don't want to go personal. I'm just, you know. I don't want to give no examples. I just wanted to be straight there because there's so many things that we went through and we cried because of the conditions that we came here in, but we didn't use them. We didn't use the conditions for the betterment of ourselves and others. You know, a lot of us came from families that don't understand what we do and why we're here. But after you show them, in a good way, they will understand and they will uh, be a part of. And it's not being motivated to show them. It's about showing yourself. No study groups that I've had, my, my family really, they don't, they, don't, they don't come on, you know? And I feel like that's a great thing. So if no one in your family support what you do, that's what happens when you're a leader. Don't beat them up. Just keep shining and get brighter and brighter because if you shine uh, like this today, you're going to shine uh, uh, like a clearer um, stone tomorrow. You, you understand what I'm saying? You keep getting better. And don't you mistake yourself and uh, fake yourself out by lying to yourself. 
An example of lying to yourself is blaming other people. Find a way to get, get yourself out of that. Because it's a circle. He did this, she did that. Listen, it's going to keep happening as long as you keep thinking it, because you're going to be in that circle. That's why you attracted the people, because they you. You are them. Jesus and Judas, no one wants to go deep and think that Judas had to be a part of Jesus. Oh, my God. Why would he have to go to the cross? I mean, it's just the unspoken word. And then he was hanging up there with three thieves. I'm, I'm in history now. I'm going to tell you that that's the way they do it over there. That's how they kill people anyway. That's how they, you know, if you steal something, that's what happens. History. You got to study. Then you'll find out that We've been listening to our pastors and leaders says, oh, and he rose on the third day. He is alive. She is alive in you. But you got to get to your heart and stop being uh, who you've been. Life abundantly is not coming to people that hurt other people. You can't get it. You can only get abundance of hurt because that's what you give, right? And I mean, it, to me, I used to think that, okay, what well, people know this. And then I started seeing no, but I also started seeing that people with mental health issues talking about this, it helped them. Number one, because I, I would take them back into history. Your social economic issues have been there so long that you believe this is just how it's gonna be. Even when you get in a company of people that are teaching spirituality and manifestation. Because if you're going to manifest, you got to be about truth. What is your truth? You can make that a goal. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. But you was angry when someone showed up and really showed that they were divisive. You was angry and you still angry. You should be like, yes, this is where we got to get to. I know you the devil, so I'm not with you no more. I'm not working with you no more. I know you the devil. And because I see that you're the devil and we are in a place where there's a separation happening, whatever, it's just not with uh, relationships. That means that I'm moving out of that energy. And somebody might say, well, you know, why, why did you have to leave your house? Because you moved from energy. Another one is coming. Something new is coming. Because all of us on here have made changes in our living status. You know, I want to address that. Because a lot of people will look at it and say, well, gosh, what happened? God, did you forget me? And your lower self wants you to stay there. No, that's actually your John self. No, it's something better coming. But who has to help with the understanding of that. You are a creator. And that's why from heaven to earth, your manifestation of abundance cannot come until you start dealing with yourself in the heaven. And then you helping people to understand how to manifest. And it's important to me to do to say that because of the age that we're in. See, we were in a time, you can remember when we could um, claim it and it was there. I, I watch. I watch the energy shift, the time change. And if the time changed and then it was like nothing was happening for people. Oh God, where is God? Oh God. But then they didn't even know that God had to have a goddess. You cannot define God without a goddess because we are not born of a man. And so the woman has to be identified in the equation. That was a hard thing. I can tell you probably about 25 years ago when I got the concept, I was like, dang, I don't know. Cause you know, I've been saying that Jesus is the way, 
God, my father. And I ain't making fun. I'm just saying, when I upgraded, what I found is, is that I was not against what God was doing and saying. It was my mind being programmed for others, but I broke through that really easy because I was never for. I was not meant for that kind of imprisonment. Mentally. And, you know, don't believe everything people tell you. Entertain the thoughts of your mother and father. God, you had a mother and father that birthed you. So there has to be a mother and father in the spirit realm that's birthing you. It, it, Genesis 2 is, is, is really there and it, it's very, very hidden. He says, let us. Well, who is us? So there has to be plural, not one. Get him alone out of your head. Abundant life, because it's a lie. All of the lies cleared out. I gotta have a man to have a baby. I got to have wholeness in order to manifest. Do you see where I'm coming from? Without no heaven, there is no earth. Your goals have to be met spiritually and in the physical, the earth. Heaven and earth must come together. And remember the prayer that they told you. If I bind it in heaven, then I bind it in earth. That means that I need knowledge from heaven and I need it from earth. This ain't no one-sided thing. Because a lot of people done died from sicknesses because they didn't know how to really go into the spirit and get their healing. That's, that's sitting in meditation. You got to see your body whole. Yes. So I think that that's enough to get us into the mindset of our goals, you know, and really see it from a spiritual concept because the prosperity that man and women need at this time is not coming without unity of the spirit realm. That's, that's the energy that we are in. So Aquarian age, and for those that don't know it, you look up Luke 22 and read. And if you need to go back and read 21, because Jesus points the people to the Aquarian age, which is the man with the picture. Now, if people had a study, and the reason why you want to know the timing, because your timing and the season equates the outcome of your goals. So if he pointed the person to the man with the water picture, picture, and that man is actually a constellation, then you can understand why we need to teach the whole system and not have heaven and earth. And then I want to take you just one step further, because when you look up that man with the water picture and what he says about that man, he says he'll be in the upper room. The upper room is in Acts 1 where the, the, the disciples had to stay praying until the spirit of God came. So we're in a spirit of God time. We're going to die in this time because we, you know, we, we, we're in it. So what does that have to do with us and our businesses? It means that we're going to manifest from that perspective. So everything that I think is my manifestation. So then you want to work on seeing it cuz that's where your heaven is in your in your uh, third eye you want to see it whatever it is you want to see it and it should be contrary to what you've been seeing like if you see nothingness 
then you get nothingness, right? But if you see something, and, and, and you know, for people that experience trauma, what I teach them is the same thing, but you got to stop seeing those memories. Because those memories are not going to produce happiness. And I had a young lady that said to me years ago, he, you know, he this and he that. And I was like, well, is it he that gives you um, your confidence and your self-esteem? And that was God teaching her through me because it just came out. You don't, you don't depend on people for what you need. God will supply you through people. This is a time when it, it, it would be a wonderful time for me. Because I thought I was crazy. But I have to live from this here uh, particular uh, way. So you find out how you were created and what you are to live and to do for. And because of the way that my um, astrological positioning is, I live from the Piscean way. I have to I have to learn and teach people metaphysics because that's where your bondage breaker is. We've been in bondage. Some people still is. They went to church, they were saved. I ain't saying that you ain't felt the Holy Spirit, but you ain't broke the bondage because you haven't looked at the things that we have discussed today. So go back and listen to the video and um I surely hope that you're blessed, because I am, and that you begin to uh, see those moons and other things that we would bring into um, perspective concerning the teachings that we've had, where they took away things. Who told you you had to vote anyway? I mean, what, what, why? What, 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 what is it doing for you? Just humor me. What, what has it done for you? And then when you, you know, when you hear me out in that, gather your information because you are the one that makes the difference. We the people for the people is what they said, but the people ain't did nothing for the people. I keep saying that until people get it. You, you, nothing will change until you do it. You pray for everything that you need to help those in the gamut or segment of your life and what you're going to do. Because when I needed food distributors and I'm praying for them as I get ready to um, relocate, then that meant, uh, I was seeing it coming and surely I was connected with people that would do that, give and I really was. Also people that would give me uh, food that was cheaper, not cheap food, but give me a cheaper rate. Do you understand? I'm just saying, make it as it fits. All right, so I'm going to, um, I'm gonna close myself off and thank God for you know that uh, understanding and the wisdom and that we'll get more so that we can, you know, um, impact lives and empower. This is an empowerment time for people that have been last. Yes. Amen. Can I just say something really quick, <laughs> Prophet is Kim? Yes. And then I have to, I got a um, 115, um, I'm sorry, 130, then I have to jump and get ready. Um, so I wasn't really sitting today, but I did have you on in the background as I was walking around doing things and you touched on a lot of things. And I know we spoke about some of this stuff behind the scenes, but I just wanted to let everybody know, you know, you've been talking about like mental, um, uh, what do you say, mental health um, for years now. And I know really heavy, heavy um, last year, you kept getting us prepared for mental health, right? I wanna tell you how tapped in you is. I was on um, a call, one of the chats in Clubhouse and um, they, you know, they have this group of conspiracy theory that I jump into, right? And I jump into this group because you get all of the shit that, you know, like you, you get all of these theories, right? So. 
when I jumped into this group um, a couple of days ago, um, the gentleman reminded me of, of, of what you said, like it came back full fledged and just at the time that we're in. He said that he was watching the news and he paid attention, he pays attention to what's said. He said there was a, um, a like some type of conference where Joe Biden um, did a speech and Joe Biden mentioned that he was not going to defund the police department, but he was going to actually give the police department more money. But he was also going to implement mental health specialists, right, to ride along with the police officers when they have, quote, unquote, domestic abuse or, you know, or any type of situation. They were going to be sending out mental health experts with the police, right? So the young brother um, began to tell, you know, everybody on the chat that that concerned him. And what he saw coming was a uh, more of a mass murder amongst our people, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you have two people that's in a heated dispute, right? Uh, and the cops get called, right? And you have someone from the mental health um, division with the cops that deems somebody mental unstable when in the, when in the midst of a heated argument or, you know, he, you know, he's saying all types of stuff can go incorrectly all types of stuff can go wrong so he's predicting an increase in um killings in our community yeah. based on based on this mental health um you know ad addition that they're now going to be adding to the police department so i say all of that to say um for the past year you've been talking about mental health mental health and i don't know about everyone here um on the platform but i feel like everyone here on the platform in one form or a next, that is um, part of you know what you're going to be given back to 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 you know to to serve right. Whether it's um, Stephanie on her podcast that's helping people through trauma, especially you know like was, you know um, abuse you know. Uh, whether it's Nye that's helping people to mentally get free with weight loss you know. I feel like what we are all doing here is going to be touching people in some type of mental um, you know capacity or mental. Um, capability. And I also wanted to add that smack on what you've been saying for years now, because okay. now they're starting to implement it on a governmental aspect, right? And then when you get there um, and you have someone, and I'm not, you know, I'm not putting down any therapist or anything, but what I find with that type of, and I told you about the young lady that came to me, right? And said she's been seeing a therapist, but she doesn't feel like the connection is there. So yeah. I feel like with that mental health capacity, capacity, if they're not incorporating spirit behind of it, a lot of people get, get stuck in, in, you know, in what they're trying to push for. Um, so I just wanted to add that you were spot on and it's now starting to show up with this new president that's coming in. They want to implement that in the actual governmental system where they're going to be ranking people, right? Um, you, you, you're crazy versus you're crazy. If you just have an argument with your sister because your dad did died outside or something, right? You're going to be now placed in a category based on someone that went to school for, you know, whatever years that may not have a spiritual connection to know that there's more going on than just what happened for five minutes in front of them. So I wanted to put that out there. Yeah. And I do have, um, I have an idea of something that I'm trying to push forward right now because I see the dynamics um, playing out. When you see it coming, it's not always that you know how to format it. But one of the things about mental health that people overlook at is that it's been going on forever. And so if it's been going on forever, even though it didn't affect, you know, someone um, that is not on here, or if it did affect someone, the thing about it is, is that um, because it was not treated and people treated it with uh, material things because a lot of people here today believe that their success is predicated on what they're able to acquire. That's a mental issue because that's not the truth. And you've been going to church and if you, you said you know Christ, that's a lie because he didn't, he didn't have anything. Now, the reason why he didn't have anything in the picture is probably because he was teaching detachment. So if you detach from things, and God in heaven knows that all of us have been through it on here today, if you detach from things, your house, your car, if you had losses, and I say see me because I believe that people that have lost things will acquire that and more if they follow. 
suit. Now you don't have to do what I tell you to do, but you can go back and read everything that I said today for this video. And I am not veering from what is taught. I said, you know, I said what Paul said, the letter kills, but the spirit bring life. Anybody that's teaching you the letter and you ain't getting a spirit, there's no transformation. You are already the letter because it's written. Here you are. Mental health has always been a problem. Wherever dysfunction is, there's mental health. So let's just take the stigma off, you know? And I'm not just talking. I'm saying that I did a paper two years ago on dysfunction. 90% of America is that. Listen, you guys that vote or even the people that have voted, they're dysfunctional because they have put leaders in place and kept them there that are dysfunctional. I, you know what? I, I don't care if you let somebody else listen to this one. This video, I don't care if you share it. You let someone else. Why? Because open my mind and free me from the lies of society. And then I began to think about all of the lies that I've lived in my house. Some men and women their marriages cannot work because they don't know the truth, especially black people. Because of what they saw, because of what they live genetically. I'm not talking about the brothers, I love them. I'm saying, and I teach young women how to bring that in order because the women of my time and age are not teaching young women. You do not have to show your breast to, to get a man. You don't have to wear clothes that's two or three sizes too small for you to get a man. Teach a man how to respect a woman. Be, be beautiful and be knowledgeable. Man that's looking for anything other than that ain't looking for nothing but sex. Because a man and a woman is supposed to be partners. Partners in life, partners in business. And some of us suffer through those dysfunctional issues so that we can change it. This ain't just about your political leaders. You know, you talk about a man and a woman that is abusing themselves and what they're doing is abusing their seeds now. When, when will it end? When somebody tells them and says, you know what, enough is enough. So what you have, what Kamoy is saying is, the therapist that I work with, yeah, they're nice. So the therapists have been governed to study and to, um, to teach, I wanna take back teach. They've been governed according to the government. When uh, your elections change, people that have no money, they're always caught up in that, meaning that if they're on Medicaid or Medicare, they're always caught up in that because your presidents always change the Medicare system, Medicaid. It's, it's a shame. Right now, the people that I work with, so it goes deeper. And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people will come in and they'll say, well, I don't want to know all about all of this. And that's fine if they don't, but you better know. Because the history cannot change if your medical system stays the same. When Donald Trump was taken out, I knew it. And now we got to rewrite situations for these people that we work with. Joe Biden and his crew. All of them that think because they say t the Democrats work for them, it's a lie. Keep now, if you, stuff. yeah, if we don't get this paperwork in right, and it's not an easy thing because they make it hard for you so that the state don't have to pay nothing. If you don't get this paperwork wrote in, uh, written for PARS, the people ain't gonna be able to get um, mental health. When Trump was in, they could get groups in mental health. 
They, they had, they couldn't get just individual, but they could come into groups and at least get mental health, you know, uh, three times a week. Now that the Democrats are in, that has changed. So every time a new person uh, comes in as a president, the healthcare format changes. And it is a um, dissatisfaction to the people that they serve. Because have they came and looked at your downtown areas concerning uh, homelessness, which is what's happening to mental health clients that are severe, right? You, you, you talking about, now she, she talking about police being there and massive killing. You cannot contain a person that is bipolar that don't take their medicine. I know I got a son that's out in the streets homeless. They don't have a system that works for mental health. Yes, so the way that I had to go was the way that would help mental health and drug addictions because that's what I was birthed out of. I, I use what I have the best of my ability and why would I, I spread the seeds because you are the people that can get that information out. You see somebody that has been traumatized has a certain way that they can be taught. And you know what the cycle is? History. That's where the breaking is. So when people are, are telling me that they don't want to go this way and that way, and I'm not pushing nobody to study the Bible. I'm just telling you where I learned all of this from. I started going to school after I had gotten the truth from the Bible. All of the New Testament I could rewrite the story. I tell the story over and over again in different ways because I see things. I see what they're doing. I see why they killed per se Jesus. You know why? Because he had information that they were intimidated by. That's why they killed him. But they did him a satisfaction like all of the people that you have been around that hurt you, they killed you so that you could come back greater. That's what happened to him. He could have turned around and said, well, you know, Judah sold me out and so I'm just done with this here same and so stuff. You ever think about it, right? He could have changed his mind, but because people, they, 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 they teach on the fact of the matter that, oh, he's a savior. Oh, he had, he didn't, he had will, he had self-will too. He could have said, no, I'm sick and tired of these lying ass people and they don't even want to get up or put themselves in the water at the pool of Bethesda. They don't even want to listen. He could have did the same thing that we do, right? But because it's taught uh, the way that it is, I just believe that the, you know, what a friend we have in Jesus. If he my friend, that means we talking. Don't let the way that people taught you fool you because the truth will make you free. He did not discriminate against the woman that had had all of the husbands. He loved on her. He told her about her truth. He said, yeah, and the one you with right now is not your husband. He said, you a hoe. He enlightened her and she went on and told everybody in Samaria about where there was a problem. There was a division between the Jews and Samaria, uh, Samaria. but she, she lit them up. She told them about a man that had told her about her business. It's not so much of the prophet. It was the matter of the fact that he got into her head, the shift. And he did not discriminate against what she was doing. You can't do that when you work with people that are out there. Now, the ones I work with, when they get real with me, they know you coming, I'm coming for you because you don't talk to me anyway. They street people. But you want to change, you know, that if you work with people, you want to let them know that they are worthy to live in, in inside. They don't have to be in the streets. Do you understand what I'm saying? So all of this dysfunction is not just their fault. 
the people that you see in the downtown areas, it's your leaders. It's your mothers and fathers too that have fallen short because they didn't know. It is the dynamics of history and history always repeats. So always look at the fact, like she just said, they coming to kill anybody that ain't got the money that they, cause they just want this to be a world about money. Alice Bailey, 10 point conspiracy, read it. They don't want poor people here. So the collecting of, Poor people on poor people. That's why sometimes you got a thought just coming, but your thought has been put on um, or in a place where you don't believe it because it ain't what other people are doing. You got a thought that can save lives. You got you got to work with it. You can't play it down because nobody else is doing it. I taught this here uh, for a long time, and it looked like people wasn't listening. It looked like the consciousness, what it, consciousness wasn't changing. But I believed in what I was saying. I, you know, I asked, why would you put me in a position like this? Why would you even put me in a position where I really have to see the truth of how you lose everything for Christ? But when I look back, it's what the word said. I couldn't get around it. And some people don't want to accept that when they read it line for line and precept upon precept, that's the way it is. They see the hardships of, you know, the Christian life, but they don't want, listen, they ain't looking at the prosperity in the Christian life. And I want to just say, take the Christian life uh, or the word off of it. If you feel some way about it, because what it is, is freedom. Behind it is freedom. Christ is the way. Save in lives, freedom. Salvation is freedom. Take salvation and all of those religious connotations are freedom. Freedom is what we have been looking for. And if you don't find it for yourself, and if you don't stop giving them all of your money, you're going to always be in bondage. And you could take that and just add on to more when you think about it. And what I'm saying, because the church has been involved with state. Paula White knows she ain't got no business getting involved with that. If she prayed for Trump, she should be on the other side. No one should know about that. Church and state is not supposed to be together. And more preachers that's telling you how you should go. I said, I ain't no preacher. I'm telling you the truth. I'm like, Christ, freedom. Because they taught you to make bills. I brought Bill up in the beginning. But God said, I am the power that you have to get well. Over in Deuteronomy 8 and 18, I give you the power to get well. I give you the power. I am the power in you to get well, which takes you back to the energy. Why are Black people in America, after all, they were strong? And they had the energy to push the fields. Without the produce, the other folks couldn't have it. Listen to what I'm saying. You better look at your value, Black people. And I don't care what nobody have to say about them folks to, uh, that they didn't vote it on. Look, to hell with them because I say they ain't did nothing for you. I don't care what nobody say. You better take your life. And you better begin to work with it and make changes. Do not repeat. Don't, don't be like the children of Israel. Because they was grumbling and moaning about how to cross over. The crossover is right up in here. It's in your heart. 
your brothers and sisters need you. And if you still adopted into a plan where it's only about you, how you say you do it, how, how you going to do it, listen, you ain't going to fit. You're going to get crushed with them out there. I see, I see the fight with these leaders. I'm going back there. It's disgraceful. They, they don't have no sight for the people. They're not even keeping up the way that they were standing in a standard. And, and, and I'm, a, I'm about to close because when I look at Obama, I am really sick of you. Get your tired ass somewhere and sit down, you sell out. Anybody that don't feel like I should have said that, you can tell me. A lot of black people was hoping on him. I knew he wasn't gonna do nothing, but a lot of black people hoped on him and their hearts was broken. Cause you had somebody of color in the, in the White House and he didn't do nothing to really help the people. 2008, a lot of people lost their homes and he was in office. He did not give that money to the people that lost their homes. He gave it back to the government. History. And now he's on there telling Trump about himself with Biden, shut up. They only for themselves. History. Because there was black uh, presidents back uh, in, six, in the 1600s when they started creating the um, Commonwealth. Yes. They all about that. All right, any questions? If not, we gonna um, call it a day and go on. That was his slogan, hope. Oh yeah, well. All right, God bless y'all. I hope that you increase, uh, increase financially, mentally, and spiritually. But from the spirit to the earth, you got to pull it down. Your money got to come here, see it and be it. You see the money coming in. Stop looking at things the way that you used to. Set your goals to see your financial gain and what you're going to help others with. Amen. All right, y'all have a wonderful day. She go live. Okay. Can, can you send me the link? Yes, can you send it to us? Um, yeah. What time? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Jasmine. <laughs> That's good, though. It's um, fine. It's fine. So, my it depends. I don't know if you guys have Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, Google. So, it's my podcast is on all those platforms. Yeah, um, I found but, you. Yeah, when I um the episode will go live as soon as Wednesday comes, so I guess midnight maybe. But as soon as it, I see that it posts, I can um send you all the links straight to the episode. Okay. But it goes live tomorrow. Do you what? do a post like picture post for um yours? Yeah, I usually I do a little video um just to say hey, it's Wednesday. Go check out the new episode, and then I have an audiogram with a snippet of the um the episode that I'll post with it and whatever quote I used. So yeah, I usually do a post on Instagram and Facebook. Oh, okay. and LinkedIn. So, um, what's, go ahead. What's the name of your uh, podcast? Hmm? Broken. The name of Broken into Beautiful. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Can you, can you tag me in it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll tag you when I um, post it tomorrow. I'd like for you to do it whenever you do your own podcast tag me. Okay. Yeah, I usually do it Wednesday mornings and say, hey, y'all, happy Wednesday, blah, blah, blah. Go check out on the episode. And I'll tag you when I do that. Okay, cool. That way.
All right. All right. God bless everybody. All right. Success, success. Y'all have a good one. You too. Bye, everyone. Take care. Thank you.